Welcome back. Now that you have installed the Citrix receiver and the SPSS app, let's take a look at everything that you're going to be working on in Module 1. Each week I will put a post in the QTI titled Module 1 Assignments and Grading or Module 2 Assignments and Grading. In that post you will be able to find this sheet which is all of the assignments and grading. You will be able to find the documents that I submitted already with all of the questions on them and you'll be able to find any other helpful resources that I can find for you all in that one post. I'm going to put together a Google Drive folder for you where you can find all of that information as well. So the first thing that you're always going to want to do is open up this post titled Assignments and Grading. On there you can see the learning objectives for the week, the links to the videos that I've created, and what you need to do to complete the assignments. So let's look at the assignments for week one. You'll have a DQ post that is due by Wednesday. You will have a DQ post that is due by Friday. And then you will be required to participate throughout the week. In order to earn full credit, please follow the guidelines that I posted in the announcements and in the QTI. But in general, you will have to have at least six responses to other students that are substantive, grammatically correct, cited, and at least 150 words. Those are in addition to the DQ responses. So the assignments that are due each week you'll have will be questions to be graded. These are all found in the same resource book. So the questions to be graded that are due this week are exercises 6, 8, and 9. Altogether, those will be worth 80 points. These will revolve around questions in that text. There will always be a study that goes along with them. The second assignment that's due is exercise 27. Now this is worth 90 points. This second assignment is always the one that requires you to use SPSS. So I'm going to take a look at that assignment and show you how to work through that. This first assignment that is worth 80 points, sometimes it's one assignment or exercise, sometimes it's two, and sometimes it's three. This is the only week that it is actually three exercises due in the same week. I know that is a challenge and I understand that it is not something that I created, um, but you will be able to get through that. So in that same area, you will be able to see that I already took all of the questions and put them in a single document for you to answer. So you just have to open up that document and use the book that has the exercise in it to answer the questions then this one assignment, you're going to save it and submit it to me when you have all of the questions answered. So the assignment that requires SPSS is always the second assignment, it says exercise 27. So again, this is in that reading, and you're going to have to answer these 10 questions. Now some of these you might be able to answer by calculating yourself, but the school wants you to use this SPSS program and show how you did that. So I'm going to take this opportunity to work through this data set with you, but deleting a little bit of the data so that I'm not really giving you the answers, just showing you step by step how to complete it. You will find the example data set all saved in a location in your classroom as well. I took all of them and saved them for you. So that is also part of the resources that I provided. You can also find this if you are using the Elsevier um, textbook launch. So let's click back to our Citrix receiver and click on SPSS. This does sometimes take a little while to load. Let's give it a second. What we're going to do is pull in one of the data sets that I have saved for you. So right now these are all on my computer. You probably haven't done that yet, but you are going to want to go get all of these data sets so that you don't have to retype these in. So right here you can see I have one or two of them saved. I'm going to click open to show you what I do. So I already saved all of these for each exercise that you're going to do for the next five weeks. And I will upload them to you. Just click yes when this comes up. If it does, it might not come up for you. Um, and so what I'm going to do is go open up my data set. 
And this is the data set for exercise 27. You can see up here in the name, it says module one SPSS 27, example one data. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off um, some of this data at the end. That way I can show you how to work through everything in this problem without showing you the actual answers. So you can follow through with me step by step and hopefully your answers will be the correct ones because you will have 10 patients and I will only have eight. So I don't feel bad about showing you this because I'm walking you through the steps and not really giving you the answers to the questions. You still have to do this on your own. So I'm gonna go back to the question set down here for exercise 27. So some things that you need to find here are the mean of the sample data, um, the percentage of patients that never use tobacco, standard deviation for age, and so on. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of these things at once. So what you wanna do is go up here to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and click Descriptives. I'm going to put over here Age, and click OK. So now you can see it opened up a new output table where it is showing me for my data, the minimum, the maximum, the mean, and the standard deviation. Now this is gonna be different for you because you have the full 10 data set points in yours. I am going to click back over to my data table. I'm gonna read the next question here. What percentage of patients never use tobacco? Well now this is a different tab in here. So I'm gonna go back to my table, analyze, descriptive statistics, frequencies. Now, I'm going to click on tobacco because it asked me about tobacco. If you click statistics in here, you can see other things that you might wanna check. Right now, I'm just going to click okay on this and it's going to bring up frequencies. So you can see in my data, patients that never smoke tobacco is 25%. I'm gonna go back to my questions. I'm looking for the standard deviation for age. I'm looking for any outliers. Now this is a question you're gonna answer on your own. And I'm looking for the range of age values. So I'm going to click back on my data set and I am going to go to analyze, descriptive statistics, descriptives. Now under options here, I didn't select all of these other things before, but I am going to check them now, variance and range. Click continue, click okay. And what that did is it gave me some more information here for my age. Like it gave me the number of people in my grouping, the range, the minimum, the maximum, the mean, the standard deviation, and the variance. So now I have all of that information to be able to use in those questions. I didn't need them in the first question, but now I do. So I'm gonna use those, questions, those to answer the questions. If I go back, it asks me what percentage of patients had been taking infleximab and what percentage of patients had rheumatoid arthritis? What percentage of patients had irritable bowel syndrome? So I'm gonna go back to my data set here um, because now I realize, hey, I needed this diagnosis. I maybe needed this biologic column, but I didn't have those before. So I'm gonna go to my Analyze tab under Descriptive Statistics. I'm gonna click Frequencies again. And I'm gonna put these in here by clicking on them and clicking on the arrow. And then clicking OK. So now in my output table, I do have that information in there now. I have, <clears throat> sorry, I have um, the tobacco percentages. I have the biologic percentages. And I have the diagnosis percentages. Now I can use those to answer all of the questions that I just saw. I didn't know I needed them at first, so maybe I should have checked them all when I first started so that I can go back and find that information without redoing it. 
or you can just do it as the question comes up. It really makes no difference which way because you're going to copy out some data for me to show me in your tables in a second. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, this question always throws people off here. What is the 95% CI for age? If I click back on my table over here, I go up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics. I am just going to go to Explore. Click Age. Send it over here to our dependent list. And under Statistics, I can see that I can change my confidence interval to whatever percentage I wanted. So for this question, we did want the 95th percentile. So I'm going to click Continue and then click OK. And when it opens up my table here again, you can see that it's giving me, under Descriptives for Age, the 95th percentile, 95th percent CI interval is a lower bound of 51.56 and an upper of 75.69. So that is my answer to that question. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to get this information over there. So it looks like we have everything we need to put back in our answer sheet. So you can see everything is stored over here. I can save this and I do recommend File, Save As and save this document as your data output somewhere on your computer. If you want to keep it, I don't really want to keep mine, but if you want to keep that, save that on your computer. And so now what we're going to do is go back to the questions here. So what is the mean age of the sample data? Well, let's go back and take a look. That was one of the first ones we did. The mean age was 58.63. But I need to include my data. That is in the instructions. I need to show that I did go calculate this out. How do I do that? I'm just going to take my mouse over this data table and I'm going to right click on it. If I right click on it, I can hit copy. Now I'm going to go back to my problem set. I'm going to right click here and I'm just going to click paste and put my table in there. That is all the work that you need to show for that problem. The course is requiring you to use SPSS. You found your answer. You pasted that in there. I'm going to do the same thing with a percentage of patients who never used tobacco. So I'm going to go find that data table, which was this one right here. I'm going to right click copy on that, go back to my problem set. I know this is where I wanted it. So I'm going to right click paste. And I'm going to answer the question here. Patients that never used tobacco for my data set was 25%. Now you can also click in there and highlight that. So now that it's in there, it's actually part of your Word document. So you could click in there and highlight that too as well if you wanted to, that that is your answer to that question so that there's no confusion that I can clearly see where you are gathering that information from. And so I would just do the same thing. This one is the standard deviation for age. I can see that value up here is 20.410. Now I don't need you to paste that table in again for me. You can just put 20. 20.410 in there for me. You don't need to paste it in again. And then you just answer the questions by doing all of that throughout. Then you save this file, and this one file is the file you're submitting to me. I really do hope that this helped. You can ask any other additional questions that you have by posting in the individual forum, but this should be able to get you through this first exercise using SPSS. And I will have more videos to come for the upcoming weeks. God bless you and have an amazing day.